Hey everyone, we're going to be looking at using pipes in an Angular application. So if you're unfamiliar with pipes, these are a way to transform data within a template. Um, so there's, there's many different transformations that you can think up. We're going to be using one example in particular, one that I find myself using quite a bit. Um, but we'll get there as, as we get there. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you, you probably do want to have the Angular CLI installed. Uh, if you're if you're developing an application for say native script or Ionic framework, make sure you have their CLI installed. But but for this example, we're just going to be using the Angular CLI. So this is a web application, but the concepts will apply elsewhere as well. So let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to create it on my desktop. I'm going to say ng new my project. It may take a bit of time. But when it's done, you should end up with a project on your desktop or wherever you installed it to. So we're going to navigate into it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up in my editor of choice. So in this case, I'm going to be using Atom to edit this project, but you can use whatever you'd like. And I'll close these tabs. Um, so we're going to be spending most of our time in two files, well, three files actually, one file that we've yet to create. Uh, but before we do that, let's let's come up with our scenario, and then we'll worry about creating the pipe, which will which will handle our transformations. Um, so within your project, go ahead and go into the source directory, and then the app directory, and we're going to spend our time in the app component.html file, and the app component.ts file. So the goal of this example is we're going to transform an object so that way it could be looped through using a uh, an ng4. So what we want to do is we want to do the following. So first of all, let's go ahead and wipe out this line. We're not going to need it for this example. I'm going to fix my tabs here. And I'm going to start by entering the following. I'm going to say public, let me tab it, public info. This is going to be of type any. But in reality, it's going to be an object. I just don't want to define my object as an interface first. So we're going to use any. Then we're going to say public constructor, and we're going to go ahead and set up that object. This.info equals, and then let's go ahead and say first name, last name, and we'll say maybe URLs, and this will be an array. And the first URL might be this blog. The second URL might be some kind of social media. It doesn't really matter. I'll use my Mastodon account. And we'll leave it at that. Um, so what's going to happen is, so if you're familiar with ng4, you're familiar with being able to loop through an array. But really, you can't loop through an object. If you're familiar with AngularJS, looping through an object was possible. Um, and you might be wondering why you might want to do this in the first place. So it's incredibly useful to be able to loop through an object if you want to have dynamic content. Not dynamic content as in like dynamic values, but maybe you have a form and that form evolves over time based on something in your database. Um, or you may have a bunch of NoSQL data in your database and you want, and you don't know what that data is. You just want to be able to print it out on the fly. Being able to loop through each of these properties is definitely a good thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a pipe that will allow us to do this. Um, and going back into our um, terminal here, we want to go ahead and create that using the Angular CLI. So I can say ng g for generate pipe, and I'm going to say keys. That's going to be the name of my pipe. And what that did was it created a pipe file. So it created it keys.pipes.ts. And this is where we can define what happens in our transformation. So let's go ahead and fix my tabs here. I always like to say public here, even though you don't have to. Um, and we're going to start defining uh, what this does. So this is, of course, a transformation. So we're going to be the value is going to be uh, what we're going to transform here. So we're going to say let keys equals empty array, and we're going to say for let key in value. So uh, we're going to iterate every property inside of the past value. Um, so 
by any property I mean what appears in here. So we're going to iterate over each of these properties. So this is a loop. We're going to say keys dot push because the goal here is we want to return an array uh, because the ng4 requires an array. So we're going to say key and that's going to be key and value it's going to be value key. Um, so if you haven't if you haven't noticed what we're doing is we're returning an array of objects now. So we're, we're taking an object and we're turning it into an array of objects. And that array, so each object in that array has a key and a value. And that'll be useful when it comes to uh, printing stuff out on the screen. So the return value, what we're going to do is we're going to return the keys and hit save. So that's all. Hold on. Oh, no, it actually worked. I don't know why it threw a little error there for a second, but it worked. So what we have to do is now we have to import uh, this pipe into our application. And what where we do that is we do that inside of the app.modules file. And as you can see, the CLI has already done that for me. So we don't really need to worry about that. If you're not using the CLI or using an older version of the CLI, you'll still have to do it manually. So the next step is to go to our app.component.html file. And at this point, we can actually worry about printing it on the screen. So we're going to remove that. I'm going to say div. And I'm going to say ng4 equals let i of info. So typically, um, as of right now, if, that, if info was an array, i would be each item in that array. But it's not an array. It's an object. So we have to use our pipe. So we're going to use this pipe character. And we're going to say keys. So that's the name of our pipe. So that does our transformation. And now we can actually start worrying about printing it on the screen. So let's say P, so paragraph. We're going to say ng if equals, so if i dot keys, well not keys, key, because remember we have a key and a value now. If i dot key not equals, we can say uh, URLs. Then we're going to show this on the screen. I dot key, and we're going to say I dot value. And the reason why we're doing that is because if we go back into our app dot uh, component dot TypeScript file, uh, so URLs is not an object. So if it's if it's not an object, uh, what we're doing is we just want to print it out. We don't want to worry about uh, if it's if it's not an object. We're just going to print it out. So the last name and and then whatever the value is. If it is an object, or if it is an array, we want to loop through that array again. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to say if, uh, so we're going to say div ng if equals, so if, if the key equals URLs, so if it is an array, not an object, sorry if that was a little confusing at first, I had to think about what I was saying, um, we're going to, we're going to do another loop. So we're going to say p URLs p, and we can actually just say um, instead of URLs, we can actually say i dot key, and then we're going to loop through it. So we're going to say ul we're going to say li ng4 equals let URL of URLs. Instead of let URL of URLs, what we can actually say is i dot value if we wanted to, and we're going to say URL. Now let's go ahead and run this and see where we stand as of right now. Make sure that there's no errors as as of right now. All right, so it's running. If I go to localhost 4200. So it went in and it printed all, all of this information exactly as it should. So if I wanted to, I can go uh, back into my app.component.ts file. I can have something like uh, job. doesn't really matter what, what I'm putting. I'm going to say uh, advocate. Hit save. Um, and now that shows up in my list. So you can see how being able to use these dynamic features of of this object is, is definitely a good thing. And this is made possible 
by using a pipe. So we were able to convert our object into an array and then we were able to present them on the screen. And, and like I said, it's not particularly useful just to print it all like this. It could be, but um, a lot of times when I find myself using it, it's because I'm populating a form. So I'm, I'm building a form based on information in my database. Um, and that's, that's the way I use it. And then, so pipes, it doesn't have to be narrowed down to just this example. You can do any kind of transformation you want when it comes to a pipe. Um, this is just one of many examples. Uh, I'm sure that there's other examples that'll better meet your needs as well.